So yesterday I wrote a blog post about fluency. What is fluency? Normally when we talk about fluency, when we say, oh, that speaker is, is that, that person is fluent. I'm fluent in French. I'm fluent in English, Spanish. Normally we understand, I mean, I understand that this person is, you know, can use language very well. They can speak it well they can understand it well but when I'm talking about fluency I'm talking about spoken fluency here I'm not talking about general language proficiency general language ability um, I'm talking about speaking so what does it mean to be fluent to speak a language fluently and um, so I wrote um, a blog post, actually that was not a blog post, but um, I turned one of my master's degree assignments that I'm, because I'm doing a master's degree in language education, so I had to write, I have to write many assignments, and one of these was about fluency. Um, so I turned that into a blog post that uh, I hope it's easier to understand, because the 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 um the assignment that i wrote you know it might be too too formal there's too much academic english uh so a blog post i think it's more accessible um and i say that we have we all have a different idea of what fluency is so you might think that fluency depends on how many words you know Fluency might depend on how much grammar you know. Um, it might be related to how how fast you speak, um, or how many how many times you have to stop and think. And I then talk about what the experts say. And different experts, different linguists, they have their their own idea. Not idea, but they, they've defined fluency uh, in different ways. Because fluency is a concept, uh, a complex concept. So one expert says that fluency depends on how many pauses you have in your speech. So if you have too many pauses, and um, also not only how many pauses, but also how many time, how long these pauses are so if they're very long or if they're short so it depends on the length of the pause uh, it also depends on where you have those pauses if you say for example yesterday I went yesterday I went to um, the mm, supermarket so this is not okay this is not a fluent speaker i'm not speaking fluently because i use too many pauses they are too long i don't feel those pauses i don't feel them with for example um what's the word for supermarket so i don't feel the pause i i have long periods of of silence and there are too many, there are too long, and they are in places where you would normally not expect a pause. So you would normally expect a speaker to say, yesterday I went to the supermarket. If you hear yesterday, uh, I uh, went to the... So, so um, you see, now I'm not fluent. I'm thinking about what to say. Um, these pauses are what contribute. Is, so these pauses is what contributes to fluency. Okay. Then there is another thing that might uh, another definition of fluency. Um, an expert, another expert says that fluency depends on how much you focus your attention to the elements of speech. 
What does it mean? So when I'm speaking and I have, if I focus too much on how to produce sentences, how I have to um, build a sentence, what what verb form I need to use, what word is the most appropriate, things like that. If I focus my attention too much on how to say things rather than what to say, then you're not fluent. You will not sound fluent. Um, when you speak your first language, for example, you never, I, I, I know that you hardly ever, if ever, um, think about the grammar. You, you don't think about the grammar. Sometimes maybe you stop and think because you don't remember a word, but you never think about how to build the sentence. What word comes before what other word. So it's all automatic. Okay, it, it, it's, um, it comes naturally. In, in, the, in your second language, probably, maybe in English, it doesn't work like this. You need to stop and think. What, what, is, what, what should I say first? Should I use this first or that first? Uh, what's the structure of the present perfect? I have been to... Okay, so that's correct. I'm going to say it. So there is a lot of uh, brain energy that goes into how to say things. And that's uh, what maybe without maybe, it's what affects your fluency, okay? Another expert, two researchers, uh, they, they gave their own definition of fluency again, and they said that fluency is all about how long it takes you to find those language items, so vocabulary, words, uh, grammatical structures, um, pronunciation, so how to pronounce words. So how long it takes you to take those those language items from your long-term memory to your to your what? Hmm. To so to put them into practice, to put them to to produce them. And I don't know if I've I've been clear. It's it's much clearer on on the blog post. Uh, but anyway. It all depends on how long it takes you to remember those items and to produce them, okay, to express yourself. So if, if it takes you a long time to remember a word or to remember how to produce a sentence, um, then, of course, you won't, you won't sound fluent. For example, if I say, oh, yesterday I went to the... Uh, and now I'm, I don't remember the word supermarket, so it takes me time. So, okay, oh yes, the supermarket. So, fluency goes down. The degree of fluency goes down. So, this is to tell you that fluency is a concept that is difficult to, to explain. Um, it depends on many things. But I have my own, not my own, I have my favorite definition of what fluency is. And I'm going to read it out. Uh, let me find, find it. It's on my blog post. Okay, this is my favorite definition of fluency. Fluency is the ability to make the best use of what is already known. I'll say it again. Fluency is the ability to make the best use of what is already known. What does this mean? This means that you can be fluent in, even, even if you know 100 words. Maybe you know 100 words, you can use them fluently. Um, maybe you know a lot of words, but you can't use them fluently. So it it's not related to the number of words you know. Think about kids. Kids know very few words, but they can be very fluent, right? They make a lot of mistakes. They might make a lot of mistakes, but they're very fluent. So if you 
th this is, I think it's the best definition of fluency because it tells us that to become more fluent, you need to practice what you already know. All the English that you've, you've already learned, all the words that you've already learned, all the grammar that you've already learned, you need to put it into practice so it becomes more automatic, okay? It becomes more natural. It doesn't have anything to do with mistakes. You make the best use of what you already know. So you use the words, the vocabulary, the expressions, everything you know to communicate. And by practicing, so by keep practicing this, keep practicing using all the language that you've already acquired, that it's here in your brain, by doing that, you develop fluency. So I think this is, um, it's helpful because it tells you that, you know, maybe you think oh, I need to study, you know, more words now because I want to become fluent. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I mean, actually, no, you should. <laughs> you should learn new words. Um, if you want to, you know, if you want to express yourself with more precision, but that doesn't mean that if you learn new words, then you you are flu you become automatically fluent. No, because you need to practice those words. You need to practice what is already in your brain, so it becomes second nature. This means it becomes like. Uh, it becomes normal, okay, natural, normal for you to speak and to produce those um, and, to, and to speak the language. Um, I hope this is helpful. Uh, I would like to know your definition of fluency. And um, I also wanted to tell you that if you want to practice what you already know, this, this might sound vague, you know, it might sound vague. So what does it mean I need to practice what I already know? I know this sounds a little bit vague, but uh, I know some activities because, you know, I've, I've been teaching for quite a long time now. And uh, in class, I do fluency activities. And um, you can do these activities too, on your own, if you want. And I'm going to tell you about these activities um, in the next video, in the next podcast, and in the next blog post. But I would like to know your definition of fluency, if you have one, okay? Or if you have any questions, if you have any comments on this, uh, maybe if you disagree with something, uh, because of course, you know, Language learning is, is, is a, it's a science, okay? So I think when, when we talk about science, then we have, uh, you know, one study says one thing, another study says another thing. So you might disagree with me. You might disagree with me. You might not like the definition, my favorite definition of fluency. So I invite you to, um, to share your your doubts, comments, and questions, okay? I hope this is helpful, and uh, I'll see you in the next video or podcast or blog post. I can't see you in a blog post. Anyway, all right, bye-bye, bye-bye.